To mix universes for a second, the TIE Fighter of the Star Wars franchise is kind of like the Zergling of the StarCraft franchise. They're fast and cheap and expendable and they have no defenses and they're meant to overwhelm enemies. It's quantity over quality, at least when you're trying to stamp out a rebellion. Except at NASA, where they already have real TIE Fighters. What makes a TIE Fighter a TIE Fighter? Well, aside from the characteristic solar panels and the eyeball-shaped cockpit, the secret is in its name. The TIE in TIE Fighter actually stands for Twin Ion Engine. It's what makes the TIE Fighter so nimble and what gives it that characteristic screech through space. Wait, if you're in space, how can you, how can you hear anything screeching? Are you hearing it from the point of another starship or? Though they sound like a sci-fi invention, ion engines are absolutely real. And I'll give George Lucas credit, somebody has to, for using a technology that came out only 10 years before A New Hope. All right, so what is an ion engine and how does it work? First, a little rocket science. In space, there's nothing to push off against, just, well, space in every direction. So to move, you have to throw mass in the opposite direction that you want to go. When they launch here on Earth, rockets look like they're pushing off against the Earth, but they're actually using Newton's third law, which says each action has an equal and opposite reaction to push off against themselves. When you throw out mass or rocket fuel out the back of an object really fast, the equal and opposite reaction is to move in the opposite direction really, really fast. And in space, there's nothing to slow you down. Traditional rocket fuel provides a lot of thrust all at once. It does look like an explosion, after all, but it is heavy and expensive. So for longer trips through space, scientists started looking at different ways to throw mass out of the back of spacecraft. So in 1959, the first working ion engine was developed by Harold R. Kaufman at NASA. So here we have our ion engine. There's magnetic coils running along the engine that provides a magnetic field, and an electron gun that fires off electrons, and a dispenser for the atoms acting as our propellant. So, to get this working, first the atoms are introduced into the chamber, and then electrons are fired at them. When they meet, they produce an ion with a charge when an electron is stripped from it. This is the making of a plasma. Then these ions are drawn towards a series of grids that have different electrical charges. And when these ions encounter this difference in charges between these grids, it is accelerated out the back of the engine, moving the entire spacecraft, although a little bit, still forward. Although there is an electron gun at the back that fires into the stream of ions to make sure that the entire engine doesn't gain some net charge as its reaction is happening out the back. And the result looks pretty darn sci-fi. See, that wasn't exactly rocket science, it was exactly rocket science, but how strong can an engine be if it's only throwing atomic particles out the back? An ion engine has the kind of oomph that a car that takes four days to accelerate to 60 miles an hour does, but the advantage of an ion engine is that it can use relatively small amounts of fuel to accelerate particles out its backside at speeds of 32,000 kilometers per hour, and ion engines can run for months or even years to get up to a speed like this, where traditional chemical rockets can only run for seconds or minutes. This means ion engines have the highest specific impulse of any spacecraft engine, meaning that it can generate a lot of thrust, relatively speaking, for how much fuel it is using over time. They start off slow, yes, but in the vacuum of space with no friction to slow it down, its eventual top speed could get you to Mars in five weeks. But here's the problem with ion engines and TIE fighters. While ion engines can go really, really fast, it takes months or even years to get up to that speed. Doing these kind of maneuvers in an ion engine, changing directions really quickly or changing velocities, is just impossible with the thrust that an ion engine can provide. Maybe TIE fighters have some kind of sci-fi tech that deals with this problem, otherwise they'd be kind of floating helplessly through space without being able to accelerate very fast, or they'd crash into the surface of the planet upon entering the atmosphere because, you know, friction and all. But at least we can say, wait, no, you don't have me now. 
stop it. At least we can say that we have our own real TIE fighters today. The first spacecraft to test an ion engine was CERT-1, and it had two ion engines. And in 2007, NASA's Dawn spacecraft had three. See, twin and, and two and three. The acronym works out. We have TIE fighters. Because science. Meow. Want more science? Check out my last video on why Han Solo was actually a time traveler. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos. If you want Because Science two days earlier than anyone else, head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions or suggestions for future episodes, you can hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks.